Hi everyone, it's Jeremy. I've been using the Xiaomi Pad C6 Pro as my main tablet for about a month now and some of you ask me what it's like for not taking, whether in class, on the move or even at home if you're using it as your main computer. I recently received the keyboard cover and today I'm going to show it to you as well as showing you all the not taking part with the stylus. Both work pretty well and with a 12 inches tablet there is plenty of room to write and read in good condition and it could replace a laptop in many situations. Let's start with the unboxing of the keyboard which is simply supplied with a user guide and a warranty card so there is no Nothing special to say about it. In terms of design, as you may have noticed, it's grey and will have a single color to match that of the Spad 6S. It's slightly larger than the tablet to protect the edges from impact. The back is magnetized and features a cutout for the photo sensor as well as Poco connector for connecting to the tablet. On this side, there is also a stand that allows the tablet to be held upright in landscape format and oriented at an angle of 110 degrees to 165 degrees, although there is nothing to place it vertically. On the other side, closed, it can protect the screen and given that it is a large tablet, there is logically a large keyboard, which also has a touchpad. The keyboard has 78 keys in the US version and 79 keys in the UK version. And as you can see, I've got the QWERTY version here because Xiaomi Global sent it to me. Well, in my case, I usually use QWERTY, so in both cases it doesn't suit me, but I'll explain why I don't want to use key sticker. If you take a closer look, you'll see the classic keys as well as function keys on the top for adjusting screen brightness, turning the sound up or down, taking a screenshot, pausing content, and so on. On the bottom left, there is a special key that lets you perform various actions. For example, this key plus C opens the calculator, this key plus B opens the note application, the key plus D returns to the home screen. It's a good thing that all of these functions can be displayed by holding down the key as it takes a little time to remember them all. The keys are also pleasant to touch, measuring 16 by 16 mm with a spacing of 19 mm and a stroke of 1.3 mm with a scissor mechanism. The pogo connector ensures zero latency during the use. If we take a closer look at the touchpad, it's 51.7 square cm which is big enough to use it comfortably. It may be a little noisy when pressed, but you can also choose to simply touch it to avoid having to press it every time that you want to click something. You can also use shortcuts such as sliding two fingers to the left to go backwards, three fingers to the left or the right to switch between apps, three fingers up to return to the home screen, or even three fingers down to take a screenshot. I told you I didn't want to put stickers on the keyboard simply because it's backlit and it would be a shame not to be able to enjoy it. Brightness can be set via the option menu or left on automatic. In this menu, you can also choose the keyboard layout, modify shortcuts and create new ones to open certain apps easily. You can also change the cursor style, choose its speed, review existing gestures and activate the touch-to-click function that I mentioned earlier. I tested the keyboard on several applications just in case and I had no trouble on Chrome, YouTube, Google Docs and Notion. And of course, since the tablet has a computer mode that can open several windows, you can really navigate as if you had one with the keyboard and touchpad. And for everything from browsing to writing text, it's really nice to use. You can switch to the stylus if you need to or detach the tablet to watch a movie in your bed because having a large keyboard is great for comfort of use, but the only drawback I can see is the weight. 535 gram and if you add it to the weight of the Pad 6S, which is 590 gram, you come up with a weight of 1 kilo and 120 gram for around 100 gram that's the same weight as my macbook air which give me more power for not taking video editing and so on so it will be the same principle for the equivalent keyboards of other brand tablets that are this big some are even probably heavier but inevitably if i have to go somewhere the choice is going to be whether i take my ultra portable computer or the tablet but not both because of the bulk and given that i can do more with the computer in doubt i will rather go with it so if you're thinking of buying one and you already have a computer, think about whether you really need one or whether a simple cover without keyboard wouldn't be enough. On the other hand, if you don't have a computer, it will give you an equivalent that covers most of the everyday uses. And if you want to take notes without getting too cluttered, maybe the Xiaomi Focus Pen might be right for you. It comes with an additional tip, documentation, and will be magnetically charged by hooking onto the tablet slot. This is a new stylus model, it features 8192 pressure level and a latency of 3 milliseconds. It weighs 15 grams and has 3 buttons for screen captures, pointing in presentation, text highlighting, video recording, and photo taking. Just to compare, the Pad 6 stylus had half the pressure level. 
Previously, the default Xiaomi Notes application was used for drawing and taking notes, but now there is also the Mi Canva application available, which allows you to really separate the stylus part to make drawings, notes, several backgrounds with different lines, several types of stylus, and also AI functions that are only available to beta tester for now. You can also use the stylus directly in a text editing application, like Google Docs, for example, to have it automatically converted to text format. There is a mini tutorial at the beginning which shows that you can, for example, scribble what you want to delete, make a small line to add text between two words, and this can be very useful for note taking at university or during a meeting and end up with a text file. So far it seems to be pretty accurate and giving the side of the screen there is plenty of room to put your hand on it and write a fair amount of text. The stylus can be also used for presentation by pressing the third button and a red circle appears on the screen highlighting certain parts of the screen. But for the moment I haven't really needed it. As far as price is concerned, the price will depend on your Xiaomi store, but for example in France the stylus is currently available at 130 euros with a 15 euros coupon available and the keyboard at 200 euros with a 15 euros coupon. It's true that when you've already spent a fair amount of money on a tablet, it's expensive to have to add this on top of everything else to really get the most of it. But if you compare it with what Apple is offering in terms of official accessories, for example, it's still a lot cheaper here, especially for the keyboard. Apple's advantage is that they have a lot of accessories made by other brands, which means you can pay less for them, and this won't necessarily be the case for the 6S Pro. But you can hope for regular discounts or pack if you buy the tablet with it. To conclude, these two accessories allow you to take notes in good condition, transforming the tablet's usefulness from an entertainment device to a productivity device. Ideally, I'd say it would also be nice to have the simple cover without the keyboard, so you don't have to keep it on all the time if you're sure you won't be using the keyboard part, because that doubles the weight of the tablet and makes it almost as heavy as an ultra portable laptop that can do more obviously. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you haven't already seen it, I'll leave you with the review video of the Pad 6S Pro right there and I see you in the next video.